This is a prime example of a stellar signature pedal. It's undoubtedly Chris Buck, who is the artist behind this pedal, but it doesn't suffocate you and it doesn't make you go down that lane. It doesn't make you play like Chris Buck, which I guess actually for some of us is unfortunate. What I'm trying to say is that it's open enough that it allows the player to shine through the tone of this pedal. It also represents something new for Thorpe Effects. It isn't just an existing pedal slightly tweaked for Mr. Buck. It's something completely new and I personally know it has involved a hell of a lot of R&D. But all that R&D doesn't mean anything if the pedal doesn't sound good. So we're going to get some tones with it today. This is the electric lightning from Thorpe FX, the new Chris Buck signature pedal. Before we break it down, please subscribe to the channel and drop a like on the video if you do like it. As I've said, every video, it, you'd be surprised by how much that helps me get seen by more people and in turn helps me make more videos. If you're a follower of Chris Buck, then you'll know that he's been touring this for like the most of 2023, all taped up and there's been kind of forums going of guessing what this pedal is gonna be. And then I started working quite closely with Thorpey at the back end of last year. So I started to see versions of this pedal crop up around the office. So the Electric Lightning is a dual overdrive of sorts. More specifically, we have an overdrive side and a boost side. The drive side for me is the headliner though. It's the most exciting thing about this pedal and the most exciting thing about it or one of them is that it is fully valve or tube driven yes there is a full valve inside of here powering that overdrive section which is just candy to us guitarists whenever we hear that there's a new product with a valve inside we get excited whether that's a pedal whether that's an amp whether it's a guitar or a valve driven tuner we would get pretty damn excited about that but more often than not i found that valves and pedals can be a bit hit and miss they don't always work and sometimes it can just be a bit of marketing not here though i can definitely tell that the valve is doing a lot of heavy lifting when it comes to the overdrive side and you do have to power this pedal with 12 volts just so the valve is getting enough juice. Thorpey does also provide the power supply, but a lot of your pedal board power supplies will also still power this pedal comfortably. So the overdrive side itself is kind of amp-like, but it's definitely not an amp in the box. That has something to do with the valve inside here, but it also has to do with the EQ section. We have a treble, mids, and bass, and it's kind of, if I'm not mistaken, kind of based off of the EQ section you would find on some old Marshall amps, meaning you tweak and interact with this overdrive side very similarly as you would with an amp. The drive sound itself though is all Chris Buck. Chris is one of the most dynamic and expressive guitar players out there at the moment, so I guess it's only fitting that the Electric Lightning, his signature pedal, is one of the most expressive and dynamic overdrive sounds out there. So let's get some tones with it. I think it's probably a good place to start if we actually try Chris Buck's own settings with this pedal. I've seen him play this pedal in person and these settings are roughly where he has it. So we'll start there and take things from there. Thank you. 
the right side of this pedal is a modified version of the Boost from the Dane, Pete Honore's signature pedal. Uh, now, if you've played a Dane, you'll know that the Boost side on that is incredibly loud. It's one of the loudest boosts out there, I think. And my understanding is that Chris didn't need or necessarily want all that boost. So the boost in the electric lightning has cut that level by maybe even half. It's quite considerable. The boost now in this in the electric lightning is more just there to thicken up single coils, as Chris is always changing between humbuckers and single coils, always changing guitar, but it also does still drive that overdrive side into a bit more gain if you want it to. and the touch sensitivity of the pedal. One of the things that struck me first when it came to pl playing this pedal and getting to know it was how focused it was, how focused and tight sounding it was. I don't know, I think for some reason I was expecting it to be a much bigger, maybe more saturated amp stack tone. I don't know why I thought that, because it's not really Chris's style either, but some of, you know, the whole thing leading up to this pedal, that's what I was expecting. But it's not that at all. It's tight, it's focused, and you can even kind of make it sound kind of small and boxy sounding, which I think is completely intentional. All of that, the tightness, the focus, the boxiness of this pedal makes it an absolute monster in a band mix. And you've got to remember that big, saturated guitar tones aren't always the best when it comes to playing in a band and can actually end up sounding quite small in a band mix. Something like this, where it is more focused on where a guitar needs to sit in the bandscape is the way forward and it's a much better way to getting bigger, clearer guitar sounds and also just being heard. with the goal in mind of being on the road, on being on the road in Chris's band, Cardinal Black, and playing night after night 
and getting those tones that he can rely on. It's going to fit so well into that band's sonic soundscape that I'm 99% sure that it's also going to fit so well into your band's sonic scape. It's really flexible, has a really great amount of gain range when you combine it with the boost that I think it actually doesn't really pigeonhole you into any genre, any type of player. It's really gonna fit on most of your pedal boards. It's an absolutely superb pedal. I really have been enjoying playing it for the past couple of weeks. And you know what, along with something like, along with something like the Music Man St. Vincent on the wall, it's probably one of my favorite signature products ever.